We're here in Randolph, Vermont, where a group of high school girls is facing backlash for daring to speak out against a biological male using their locker room. The school system is failing the volleyball girls. They are putting the trans students' needs above ours because it is one person against the 14 other on the team. I sat down with some of these girls, and they tell me that they bear no ill will towards this trans-identifying student. But they don't understand why they have to share a locker room with a biological male and they're frustrated that school officials seemingly have no interest in their side of the story. It's not fully the trans students' fault, it is much more the school board's fault, and they're failing everyone, not just the volleyball team, not the transgender student. They just want people to be in trouble and they're not trying to help make a change. Bunch of tough, resilient young girls that want to see change, and they, they're uncomfortable and they're just Vermont girls. A male was in our locker room when volleyball girls were trying to get changed. After I asked him to leave, he didn't, and later looked over at girls with their shirts off, and it made many people uncomfortable and feel violated. I left as soon as I could in a panic. I was the first one inside the locker room at the time, and the trans student came in and walked into a separate part of the locker room and went and changed while the other girls were in the main part of the locker room changing as well. As soon as the trans identifying student was done changing, they came out and stood at the entrance of the locker room for a little bit. A lot of the girls were changing in their sports bras and stuff. A lot of us stated like, can you please get out? We're changing, we don't feel comfortable with you in here. After a little while, the student did leave but it took a little bit for the student to leave and a lot of us were not comfortable with that situation. And we just, it's happened before and so we want it just to be changed really. In a locker room, it's made specifically for girls and so having a male with a penis in there, it just felt wrong. When you tried to talk to your school, school officials about what happened, what did they say? When I tried to talk to them, they just shut me down and said it was a law, there was nothing they could do, and that I should go somewhere else if I feel uncomfortable. Citing another girl on the volleyball team, school officials claim that none of the girls were undressed when the trans-identifying student went into the locker room. The superintendent quoted another student saying that nobody was changing when the trans-identifying student That's not true. Locker. That's not true? No. The, a lot of the girls were changing, actually. And when you say they were changing, does it mean like they had their shirts off, they were putting their short, they were in their underwear? They. Uh, everyone was at like different points of changing. Some girls were already dressed, some girls weren't dressed at all, some girls were like in the middle of changing. Like, So why would someone say that they weren't? Um, I feel like everyone's just trying to twist the story on us and make us look like the bad people in this situation. We're dealing with an issue right now where there is a biological guy that's been using the girls' locker room and all these people are pushing back against it a lot. Has this happened before at the high school? It's happened in the bathrooms a lot, definitely more in the bathrooms. In the bathrooms as opposed to the locker rooms? Yeah. So has, have you ever been in one of the bathrooms or locker rooms and a biological male who identifies as a transgender student came in? Um, yes, but they didn't identify as trans. They said that they were gay, so that they weren't attracted to me, so they were allowed in. Oh, wow. So gay, gay male students have been using the girls' bathrooms? In the past years, yes. Wow. How did they get away with that? Um, the school didn't care much to listen to our concerns. And then when we did say something, the person, he would file complaints of harassment because I looked at him wrong and file complaints against a lot of people. Parents told us that they are outraged that the school district and the school itself would allow such an incident to occur. They're bewildered why a biological male should be allowed in their daughter's locker rooms, and they don't understand why school officials seemingly aren't listening to their daughter's discomfort. They also said that they do not condone any kind of hateful behavior towards the trans-identifying student, and they want the focus to be on their daughter's discomfort. So I want all kids, uh, all kids at RUHS to feel safe, all kids nationwide to feel safe. 
in their um, spaces where they need to change or are supposed to be private spaces. So we have to get creative as a nation to really um, figure out how to keep everybody safe and everyone working together. And the hate really does need to stop um, because that's not what this is about. It's about let's have an open dialogue about how to keep everybody safe and feeling comfortable because we've taught children to protect their bodies. And we've taught our child, Blake, to really um, keep her body private. My daughter feels uncomfortable in the locker room while that other student is in the locker room and that's all that matters is she's uncomfortable and it's pretty simple. They need to, they need to make a change and make everybody comfortable. They state it's the law, um, but the law as it reads has some room for creativity. So let's get creative and let's make that happen so everyone does feel safe. We've been fighting for women's rights as a nation for a hundred plus years at least. And um, I think this is just an invasion of women's rights. It's just in a different form. And I heard some other people talking about how this has maybe national implications. What are your thoughts on that? I think it is a national issue. It has been for a while. We saw the, uh, the Leah Thomas uh, episodes with the NCAA, NCAA swimming, um, and so it is a national issue. Blake says she's not only failing to receive support from the school, she's also potentially facing punishment. Um, I have harassment, harassment, and bullying charges. These charges could go on her permanent record, and if they do, they might impact her future college acceptances, whether she can participate in an exchange program, and more but Blake tells us that she does not regret speaking out. I'm glad I spoke out because there's still like so much that could be done that the law could be changed because now it's national news. He had the right to go in, but like once we said we were uncomfortable, he should have just left. Like it should have been that simple. I don't want other girls to have to feel uncomfortable about it. I think everyone should be able to just get changed in a locker room that they were born as. Like if you were born a girl, you can go in the girls locker room, get out when you're done and it just, it's, it should be simple and it's not anymore. I've heard a lot of people state that the trans identifying student has more rights than the rest of us. And like that's a good way to put it. Like they care more about that one singular student than the rest of the girls. So they're like telling us all to go get changed in the single stalls instead of the locker room. And the trans person can have the locker room while all of us go into different places. I'm very glad that this whole situation is happening so we can finally get our voices spoken after years and there's many other different situations with like completely different people like colleges I've heard like stuff about this situation happening and the girls were too scared to speak and I feel like the team's like really brave about doing this because we all knew what was going to happen if we did the consequences like if one of us were to get a scholarship, they could find this on the internet and take it away. And so there's many consequences to doing it, but I think it's really important that we're doing it. So if you had an opportunity to talk to other girls who are at their schools, maybe thinking about talking about this, but they might be afraid, what would you tell them? I would tell them to speak out to their superintendents, principals, even if nothing's changed, it gets a point across that you don't like it. and. Ultimately, something could be changed. It's good to speak out, no matter what opinion you have. Everybody should be heard. And I think that's what the school needs to understand is that they need to let people be heard, which they're not doing. Is it hatred and bigotry to say that you don't want a biological male in your bathroom or locker room? No. Not at all. No. It's about their comfort and their feelings. And you can't deny anybody's feelings. It's not hatred. It's just we want to feel comfortable and, you know, talk about women's rights. You know, we should have the right to go to the bathroom without a male in our bathroom. So. 